I guess this doesn't really do it justice, this video. But this tire, this is the noise. It's not your hub bearing. It is so bad, it's not even funny. Yeah, this tire is so fucked. I don't know if you can see it. The whole inside of the tire, you can actually see how it's up here. You run your hand across it, it's, it's really bad. It is, oh my god, right here, it's really bad, although it's, I'm not really seeing it so much. I'm not seeing it as severely on the video. Wow, that's really bad. Wow, yeah, this tire is totally fucked. That's your noise. I mean, it's even affecting like right about here in, in the next thing in some places. Wow. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think it's the hub burn. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Cause the mileage is too low. It doesn't quite add up to be that, you know? But this, t this tire is totally, totally. I mean, I haven't seen one this bad in a long time. But it makes sense with the kind of noise that it was making. Wow. Wow. I don't know what this is from. I had it in my drawer, but what, like the other guy was saying, get a 45 degree hose. This is a 45 degree hose, I believe, pretty honestly. And then you cut it right here. You cut it really short. So then what goes on instantly starts to turn, you know. That's, uh, and then and cut it short, but... This is like some kind of bypass hose from something I really don't remember. There, it might be, um, I don't know, <laughs> I can guess all day long. But there was a couple of hoses, I think there were Ford hoses that were much bigger on one side than the other side. I'm, I'm not 100% sure where this one came from, but something like that. You just go to the auto parts store, ask them to look in the back, and uh, you can play with it and, you know, say, okay, that one looks, you know, like what I need, and then... Hopefully it works and it's not too much money. Or you get the part number and then you look, you cross-reference it to, to Rock Auto and then you get it cheaper there if you have the time. Briefly looking and I unplug this and I go, wait a minute, that says Kia Hyundai. And then I look at the the one that you had in that box, that's also Kia Hyundai. So basically you change when you change it, the standard version, the standard part, they actually put the Hyundai part in the box. So I'm pretty sure it's either that sensor or the timing is off, but this is actually way more complicated than I expected. Um, there's this thing here that has the fuel pump on it. And my car had the same thing, but a different version. So that's another fucking thing. Um, how wonderful. A lot to take off here for this, uh, for this thing. So, uh, I guess I don't have a choice at this point. Um, like some of the, <laughs> what's troubling here is that there's like, these, these fuel lines, they're hard lines, and I gather they, uh, let's see, it goes right down there. This is like a solid line, like how am I even going to get this valve cover off? You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. Yeah, you got to take off a lot. So, um, I'm not sure where I stand with this. At the moment, um, I guess I'll uh, start and uh, hopefully I can actually, you know, find out what I what we need to find out. But uh, it just, the car runs so fucking good, I, I really feel like it's a bad sensor, you know. Uh, I, I just uh, have a hard time, not, you know, not that sensor, the one that's back there. I, I just... I just can't bring myself to believe that there's something wrong here, you know, mechanically. Just like with the bearing in the back, you know, the tire was really the, the issue. I, I feel like there's something else going on here. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I could... I'm going to take out the sensor first and see if there's any tests I can do on it other than the jumping of it and take it from there. Holy shit, Ray.
this is just because you didn't change your oil. Holy fucking shit. Wow. What a mess. Alright, I gotta start turning this motor over. Not exactly sure how I'm gonna get there, but just like over there, this is all the sludge. I mean, Ray, you you know, you told me there was 15,000 miles over one oil change. There's no way. I mean, I don't think you changed this motor for the oil in this motor for a long time. Maybe ever. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Okay, so the yellow things are the two marks. Okay, there's an orange one for the rear. When I first pulled it up, this one was over here, so I had to go clockwise. But every time I went clockwise, this would tighten and loosen. Wow. And there's, I mean, this thing has plastic top and bottom, but I guess the whole thing here is actually all plastic on the bottom. But something is preventing this from having any kind of spring tension. This is so, I've never, I've never seen this, but look, I can actually move it a tooth. If I really wanted to, I can move it a tooth. So I don't know if that's the tensioner. And what's happening is it has it has the opposite, you know, um, it's all the way to the other side. So that's why it's holding it. I'm not quite sure. But man, what a job this is going to be. But it's, it's not looking good, Ray. There's no way this thing should be so loose. I mean, I gather it was a matter of time. I mean, I literally, I mean, and if I just show you while I'm... I got the tire off with the thing. See, watch when I go like that. It's tight. And then I start turning. Right, right there. Like, it, it just drops. So there's something not holding tension somewhere. Very, very disturbing. I can't believe this thing ran. But now I do believe it is uh, timing chain related for sure. And it's definitely related to the lack of oil changes. To be 100% honest, I before I was trying to go back and forth, it would not go backwards. And a lot of times it is a little more difficult, but I had to go back more to go forward. It wouldn't go forward after I went backwards, you know. So this is so concerning for me right now. Like, I don't even know what to think. Um, like, I, I could literally give this car back, and because I, I spun it backwards a little bit, it may never run right. And then it would justify the thing. But me talking about it should be at least one tooth that moved. Totally, totally plausible. I can literally lift it up and just move it. Uh, but I got to look at a diagram of this um, time and chain to see what... I have a feeling something just broke. A lot of times these things break. There might have been one just under this. Or it's the tensioner. Wherever it is, I'm not 100% sure. But now it, you know, it totally makes a plausible sense that there's definitely something going on here but that's bad you know very bad all right i put this nut back and started spinning it fucking thing it was just jumping like crazy it's way off now if you feel the chain it's so fucking loose and the tensioner is all the way out all the way i mean and it almost like moves too easy but this is odd. It's almost like there's another, there should be another guide. But or the, unless the guides are so worn or the chain is so stretched. That is just beyond belief. This is so weird. You know, I saw the timing mark. You can see it's holding tension on this side, but this side it's flopping around. Unreal. And right now, this is the thing. See, when this is tight, that's loose. And when that's tight, this is loose. I mean, to me, it looks just seems like either the chain is slacked or this one particularly is stuck. It's stuck in a negative way, you know, that's that's creating this, this slack, you know. Because at one point you have it, at one point you don't, because it just depends where the chain is and where that is. But, I mean... This is insane. It almost looks like, you know, it's not in bad shape. You know, but I got to figure the chain is stretched to some degree. 
And I got to figure this is bad and the tensioner for sure. The tensioner is... And the thing is, the other parts are not that expensive. It's just, I think it's just better just to do it all. You know, I mean, this one here is the only one I would say keep. The crankshaft gear. You know, I'm, I don't know now. If the chain is actually stretched that much, of course, I don't have all the parts off. But I don't know if there's going to be some huge wear markers or something like that. Like, if the teeth are knife-edged compared to the... Um, to pay, compared to the new one, it, it may be better just to buy everything and be done with it. I just don't know. This is a hex over here, right? Or a square, yeah. So usually you can hold that and then get this off. I, I had a, done a Volvo, and it was a timing belt. It wasn't even this oily, you know. It was a timing belt, but oil filled in those things. And um, there was it was cone-shaped, meaning there's no way to put it on. So you got to set the cam in a certain place and... When all is said and done, it wasn't perfect, you know? So I hope it ain't no fucking stupid shit like that. I would think in 2017 they wouldn't do that. But um, being that I did all this work, I don't know if it's it's just silly not to do it all, I think. And uh, you definitely need an oil change again. Oil started pouring out. I got antifreeze in the engine because I had this hose off and out of the way and... Trying to put this out of the way. I was trying to avoid losing too much antifreeze. I mean, I had to loosen the water pump pulley. You know, I, I guess it, it's really dry as a bone. Like, I, I don't... And, and, and even the belt. The belt is, like, super high quality. This rib design, and it's it's, like, in actually really good shape. All things aside, and it says Hyundai. Kia Hyundai. So I, I really don't think you need a belt. I really don't think you need a water pump or anything like that. This is the tension. This was so fucking weird. I, I'm not even sure I fucking took it out right. Because, uh... Oh, great. There was a bolt in here. It just dropped out. You'll probably see it on the video. It looks... It looks just like these timing cover bolts. Oh, it's gotta be this guy that's longer. Um... Yeah, so, uh... I kind of took apart more bolts than, than, you know, but even the timing cover, I mean, look, look at the sludge in the timing cover. And that's the oil pump, which is fine, but there's an O-ring there and an O-ring there. And, um, you know, the seal wasn't leaking, but, you know, do you change the seal? It's kind of silly not to. Uh, so that's, uh, that's where I'm at right now. It's pretty much all apart. I kind of don't want to take this part apart until I get all the parts you know um, but it's looking like we should just change all those parts uh, I'll start researching it tonight I came back from the machine shop he did a really good job he literally only charged me 20 bucks that was well worth it I'm probably gonna have to take this out and uh, he blew it all out and everything but because you clean it, you know, there's basically like a water solution. This is silicone. I gotta clean it. I, you know, I still got more cleaning to do after I clean it, and then I wanted to clean your engine. But since there's um, water mixed with the oil, you know, with, with solu but it's a solution, so it's not gonna really rust. But tomorrow morning, I'm gonna take this apart and really clean it all out. And um, I believe there's a couple of gaskets in there that come with the thing I'm getting from Rock Auto. So, um, uh, that, that shouldn't be a problem. But these are the two O-rings that we ordered also. This, this, this and this. It still, it still needs cleaning, but it's like this is as good as you're going to get for 20 bucks. That was well worth it, you know. So, just wanted to show you that. Just picked it up now. Alright, I'm a little concerned. I held this with the wrench. Took this guy off. No problem. This one, though, makes this noise. And it has movement. Where well, the other one didn't have any movement. Now, I don't know if that was because it's filled with sludge. We're in getting codes for this. But it's just not something I expected. And I do not know if it's normal. The other problem is, I just decided to uh, also take this out. And I basically ripped it out of the box here. Let me take my glove off my other hand. And I think I remember telling you I had a problem with the camshaft gear on a Volvo, and I was like, yeah, it was weird. It had no no gear keyway or anything. 
and I look at this, this is the gear. Yeah. Definitely the gear. It's nice, brand new. There's no keyway. So, this means that this is probably going to be heated to come off, which the bolt buster should do it. And it should slide off at that point. But how do I know where to put it in the right place? You know, so I can make my own reference points and whatnot, but it's possible they want you to bring, you know, take the spark plug out of number one, bring it up to top dead center, and make sure that it's top dead center. Like sometimes they have a tool that'll absolutely perfectly measure it. Because you don't know if that's moved now. Not that it's supposed to, but it's a little bit concerning, and it may be better off to not touch it. Um, so that's where I'm at with that. And uh, the only thing I gotta buy now is I gotta buy a bunch of engine degreaser, and I'm gonna spray it, and let it sit, because tomorrow I'll do the majority of the work. But I decided to weld that thing for you. It came out okay. I, I ended up painting it. It. Um, the metal was really hard to, 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 to weld. It wasn't sticking to the plate. It was kept burning a hole through the top and kept not really sticking to here. And I ended up with, with a shitload of weld. Um, but I painted it with this can of paint, which I'll give you the rest. And it kind of it kind of is the same color, it's just a little more dull. So it is what it is. But uh, you could spray clear coat on this too. But I, I really couldn't get a great thing. But there's so much weld around it, uh, something's got to you know be touching. So it's fine. I just used the die grinder and I went into uh, two of the three broken welds and pfft, went right back on. So I just had to enlarge them, enlarge them a little bit. Finally getting back to this timing chain and this is the bolt that holds on this front gear which I was cleaning at first you can tell there's tons of sludge behind it but this thing here I was spraying the fuck out of it I used a half a can on it and I had to take it apart it was a snap ring wow I just can't believe this I cleaned off that that was exposed on the other side but I'm just shocked how filthy dirty no matter what you know you spray on the outside and it was tight coming out too so that's another thing. And this wasn't even an issue. This is not even getting off a check engine light. Yellow mark. Yellow mark. Purple mark. Purple mark. But if you look carefully, it is definitely way more stretched. The original one. Crazy. New. No. Destroyed. Sludge in the head of the bolts. Just to give you... And update as well. I mean, it's actually pretty clean, and those things are black. The, the the guides. As much as I would like to have changed them, if I thought about it, I would have just ordered them. But it was adding, and I just they, they kind of look fine. They're plenty of. It's not like they were worn into. But the chain, like I said in the last video, was pretty stretched. Um, that's where the tensioner goes. And uh, like I said, I would have even liked to have changed that lower gear, but it re it, there's obviously other tools involved because there is no keyway on this. So there's got to be like a hole in the block because I've seen it on other cars, uh, like, like stupid cars, like Volvos, you know, where you have a hole in the block that, you know, this, this bolt on threads, big gigantic bolt like the size of this. And you put a tool in there and lock it in place. Or you take out the crankshaft sensor and you lock it in place where the crankshaft sensor went. And that prevents the engine from turning. So you turn it clockwise until it hits the tool. And then you press this on and off. But it's not it's never been the crank. It's been the crank had to be at a certain place to do the camshafts. You know, I, I just don't get it. This makes no sense to, to do something like this. The only thing I can say is that it, it normally is supposed to, you know, move. Like, it might actually change, you know, the crankshaft correlation. So, as much, because I don't really know now if it's if it's really right as well, but being that the chain is stretched and everything else, you know, um, like I said, I would have really liked to have changed this, but, uh, wow, what a, what a project, and, uh, I gotta put this guy. This is the guide that goes up top. These guys weren't even listed. This guy here wasn't even listed anyway. But it's you know the plastic is all there. It's it's not. You know these things will get like severely worn down. Like I think you had oil. I just think you had sludge created on top of the oil. You know. 
and the smallest port is what suffered you know so this type of stuff i don't think it's really that bad but i'm, I'm kind of glad i did the other the intake one it's like i showed you in the last video these are the two new ones you know and that's this is as clean as i can get it i mean there's only so much you can spray you can't really just you know go there with a washcloth and start cleaning things you know it, it's really horrible it's a, just a horrible fucking mess uh, this is the other one, but you can see all the sludge that was behind it. And this thing is filled with oil. There's a there's a little bearing in there, like the other one I had showed you that time had a bearing inside there. Oh no, this one had the bearing. This one did not. That's right. This one, this one was just this one that suspected bad because we have the code. Not to mention, uh, it may have not. I was, we were going through this where I saw you. It may have not been bad, but you know the tensioner was probably shot, and the chain was loose. So something happened, you know, so between the chain stretching and the fact that the uh, the tensioner was probably stuck, that was a big factor. But this one could have been fucked up too. But the bolt that holds this, as I showed you in that other video, this thing here had a, had a valve in it, a screen, the fucking screen was covered with fucking sludge. And I didn't film that part, but I can't believe it. I really, I'm just so in awe of how this could happen but uh this is probably the first time where i would consider a car or, you know um it's one thing to have a car with low mileage and things go wrong but uh or low mileage and 40 years old or 30 years old like classic cars but never in my life would i think i'd be working on something like this that would have created this this situation so that's where i'm at so far, so good, as far as getting these parts on. And I gotta clean the surfaces and try to get the timing cover on. And basically put everything back together. Unfortunately, a lot of shit got down in the spark plug hole, so I'm gonna have to probably clean that owl out. Spark plugs are probably fine. The car ran fine. Um, I'll know when I take them out, but I was trying to prevent like a whole bunch of shit getting in there, but the brake cleaner evaporated and now it's just like thick oil, you know, it, it probably is not a big deal. Once it's in the cylinder, it's not a big deal. It's when it's all in the oiling system here. So I would definitely be changing your oil like 500 miles and then a thousand miles and then 1500 miles and then maybe go back to normal intervals, 3000 and then, you know, other than 5000, you know, I, it's just, it's pretty horrible. Running. Uh oh, so I ended up not dropping the pan mainly because I really wanted to see how well it's going to run. Um, that's all the spraying I did, but uh, you know, it's got to be changed again. The oil, and I, I don't think the pan was going to be dirty itself. And, and meanwhile, there could have been some other crap in there, but it, it's got to be drained out a bunch of times. So, only thing left, I got all these fucking tons of plastic shit, tons of screws, this whole fucking inner inner wheel well thing with all the clamps. Um, I don't know um, if we can do it one day before I go into work. Uh, not sure yet, but it's running. I've been warming it up. I added some antifreeze because I lost a little bit. So I have it with the cap off here sounding okay it was a little shaky at first because the oil has got to get everywhere and you know there was shit sprayed into the cylinders I reused the spark plugs they look fine and um what else uh ultimately I had to clear the code before I started I lost the seal for this so I found a big o-ring in my kit that, that blue kit right there and um I had a it, it, like the biggest one actually fitted, but I had to put the next size down and stretch it on because it made the O-ring thinner. So I, I don't think that'll leak. It really went in quite nicely, so I don't know what the hell happened to it, but it got lost. It was either maybe stuck to the valve cover or stuck to the head, and I didn't realize it because I can't see anymore. Or it got stuck on that, but I mean, I had it up here the whole time, and I just don't see it. This is for my, my car. <laughs> Sorry, I got parts for... Uh, 
Yeah, there's nothing else for your car up here. I got I had all the right amount of balls. Everything worked out. So so far so good. So still got a little bit to go with the um, with the little stuff, and obviously we got to do all all these tires over. It's gonna be fun because you know I, I did four tires on my car, and it was a real pain. So I'm gonna need your help with that probably. It would be a lot better, but. Right now, I don't feel like doing nothing. I, I pretty, worked pretty hard on this, so I'm, I, I just wanted to, I ran to the store, I got antifreeze, I got uh, the oil. I wanted to see it run. God forbid if there's a problem, it doesn't, you know, if, if anything had to be ordered, whatever, while we're working, we could have ordered it, because, you know, I always expect problems. But so far, so good.